It is extremely frustrating when you have a plant that is struggling and you are unable to pinpoint what is wrong with it. So in today's video, I'm going to go over the most common reasons why a Venus flytrap might be unhealthy. And what I recommend is that you go over the full list and kind of write down what you think you might have uh, missed. And then uh, don't worry, everything is really easily fixable. And then go over my complete Venus flytrap care video so you can make those adjustments in your setup and learn a lot more about Venus flytrap care. So let's get it started. The first element that is extremely easy to miss is improper acclimation. If you're just getting your Venus flytrap, maybe you got it in the mail or maybe you got it in a store, it's likely that it has been uh, living without sunlight, without proper lighting for a little bit of time, maybe a few days, maybe even a few weeks. So do not introduce your Venus flytrap from shade into 12 hours of sunlight on day one. Instead, go over a more slow process. So introduce it to a few hours and then to a few more hours, because if not, your plant can go into shock. This next one is also a very common one, and it is too much feeding or incorrect feeding. Generally, if a Venus flytrap lives outdoors, it will capture its own bugs and you don't really need to feed the plant. But if you do want to, or maybe you grow your Venus flytrap indoors, consider feeding your plant once every month, every couple of months, but not every day and not every single trap. If you feed all of the traps, then you can actually end up harming the plant. This next one uh, really relates to something I really like about Venus flytraps, and it is that it's very hard to overwater Venus flytraps. But if you do not provide enough water, then the plant will actually struggle greatly. And you might notice these and because some common signs are actually to see a Venus flytrap that is kind of looking droopy. Make sure that the soil is always humid, is always moist. You don't have to flood the soil constantly, but it should really never dry out completely. This next one is also about water and it's using the incorrect water source. If the water you are employing contains minerals, then it will slowly poison your plant and build up in the soil. Sometimes you might observe yellow leaves and over time it will end up killing your plant. So make sure you're using mineral free water. It can be distilled water, reverse osmosis water or rainwater. Some tap water is actually suitable for Venus flytrap, but you really need to measure it. Measure the mineral content. Some water quality is actually extremely good, but at least for me, the water in my home is, is terrible. So um, just using that tap water from my home for my plants will actually end up killing my plants very, very quickly. This next item is actually not very obvious and it is stress. Sometimes causing too much stress to your plant can end up harming it and making it be very unhealthy. The most common type of stress that you might be exerting in your plant is really playing with those traps. If you are constantly activating those traps and playing with the plant, then that will create some stress. It could also be a pet that might be playing with your plant and just sniffing around and triggering those traps. Another mistake related to stress is actually repotting your plant constantly. Usually you will repot the plant once every year or maybe even a little bit more if your plant is doing just fine. But if you're repotting it every few months, um, then that can cause a problem. This next one is related to lighting and it's one that is very hard to get right for Venus flytraps because Venus flytraps will need a lot of light to be like just to survive, but then also to thrive and to get those beautiful colors and to propagate and get multiple traps, then you will need a lot of lighting. As a general rule, you, don't, you want to provide at least six hours of direct sunlight. If you cannot provide that, then consider doing a combination between artificial and regular lighting, because I understand in some, in some locations there might be limitations with these. Then we have another item that is also quite common, and this is the use of fertilizers. Overall, if you like having plants, using fertilizers is a very, you know, very common practice. But for Venus flytraps, there is a specific method to fertilize a plant. If you use the standard fertilizers, you'll actually end up killing the plant because of all of those added nutrients and minerals that will build up in the soil. So be careful with that. And uh, then we have another item that is using the incorrect soil. 
Carnivorous plants in general will require carnivorous plant soil, which can vary a little bit in composition, but in general, the, the rule is that this type of soil will contain uh, no nutrients, uh, no minerals, no type of additives. So if you're using just a standard potting soil or you don't really know which soil you grab, you just grab whatever soil you had available, it is very likely that that soil is slowly poisoning your plant. Depending on the soil that you're using, it might end up uh, weakening and killing the plant very quickly or it can take a little bit of time, which can be very tricky because sometimes your plant has been doing just fine for a few weeks and then suddenly it starts looking really bad. And it can be the soil as well as the water that I mentioned before. It's some element that you might not notice right away, but slowly the plant will start decaying more and more and will eventually die. These were some of the most common mistakes you can make when growing Venus flytraps. But of course, sometimes there are some that are even more obscure and are harder to detect. So make sure to watch my next video 